It is recorded the spot on which stands the town of Barnsley was in early times one immense forest, where the early Britons found shelter in caves and hollow trees. A far cry indeed from the three bedroom houses, today provided by a council which started building homes in 1920, and which is now the biggest landlord in the town, drawing an average of 32 shillings a week from each of their ten and a half thousand houses. Housing means homes. Homes means children. Children means schools have to be provided. Schools such as these, which provide primary and secondary education for some 14,000 children between the ages of 5 and 16. Barnsley is meeting this challenge of the future by spending over half of her income from the local rates on education. It is recognised as a vital investment in the national economy. The College of Technology, with its 6,000 part-time and full-time students, was opened in 1932. The latest development was the opening of extensions which cost well over half a million pounds. In this march of progress, the needs of the community are well served and safeguarded by the town's own police force, whose members are here seen moving out of their old headquarters into premises more worthy of the important role they have to play in a modern society. The new police headquarter building is one of the key units in a bold imaginative programme which will provide a whole series of new public service buildings in a civic centre development project. It is from this ever alert nurse centre that calls for assistance are answered. The speed of this help is hastened by the fact that the sister fire and ambulance services are housed in one of the most modern fire stations in the country. Barnsley Fire Brigade. Hotel calling. Warehouse fire. Summer Lane. Barnsley. Warehouse fire. Summer Lane. Barnsley. Warehouse fire. Summer Lane. Barnsley. Warehouse fire. Within seconds of the alert being received, the emergency service vehicles, whether an ambulance or fire tender, are manned and on their way. Within minutes they can be on the spot of any accident or fire incident occurring anywhere within the boundary of the town. Completing the circle of community care is the town's hospital service, which ranges from this general hospital which bears the name of its founder, to this modern haven for the aged sick, which has risen like the phoenix on the site of a much older hospital. And on the drawing boards are plans for a new nine million pounds hospital. But what really makes this town of ours tick? The answer is coal, coal and its byproducts. It is from the impurities left from coal after treating for coke, which mainly include coal tar, light oil and ammonia, are derived dyes, explosives, perfume, antiseptic, plastic and man-made textiles. It is true that the changeover from a purely agricultural to an industrial community began with the manufacture of wire about the 16th century and was followed by the introduction of linen making in the middle of the 17th century. But there is little doubt that Barnsley owes special thanks for her prosperity in the 20th century to the presence of the rich coal-bearing seam beneath her boundaries. Before this date, it is feasible that our ancestors, while aware of the presence of the mineral, made no great effort to work it because they had a plentiful supply of wood near at hand and which was easily obtained. Today, Barnsley is the centre of the Yorkshire coalfield, which has the biggest potential in the country and which provides employment for nearly half of the male population in the locality. This prosperity has not been gained without a price. A price paid in the lives of men who toil in the bowels of the earth 
with death and danger as their constant companions. Let us freely admit that the miner's job is a grim one, but let us also agree that the very nature of his calling has helped to mould within the character of the Barnsley miner those saving attributes of grit and gumption and greatness. No wonder that the figure of a miner with pick in hand is given prominence on the coat of arms of the county borough. His companion figure is the glass blower. The place he has earned for his trade is second only in importance to the mining industry in Barnsley.